bitte jetzt alle Zuschauer und Zuschauer, die der Vater noch besichtigen, jetzt bitte den Geist die Trafen in der Reitersprache gedacht, den Vater verlassen, damit wir pünktlich beginnen können. Wir werden versuchen, den Parcours auf der Großkindwand von Longin der Animation etwas näher vorzustellen. Wir wählen jetzt aber bereits die Fachmorelle bekannt. Die ist 465 Meter. Bei einem vorgeschriebenen Reitkämpfen von 400 Metern in der Minute gibt es eine erlaubte Zeit von 70 Sekunden. Wir haben 30 Sprünge und wir sind pro Tag 16 Minuten ausgebaut. La langue du parc, mesdames et messieurs, est 465 mètres. La vie est 5 et 400 mètres. La vie est très stable dans un parc en 70 secondes. Le très obstacle avec 16 et 3 mètres d'âge. Le règne de plus fort, c'est-à-dire que les gens ont des 465 mètres. Le speed ground sport est 400 mètres en un minute. Et c'est un temps de l'âge de 70 secondes. Nous avons 13 obstacles avec un total de 16 mètres. La prüfung est donc ausgestellt. Anwertung A, 25% der Erstklassierten nach dem ersten Umgang kommen in einen zweiten Umgang. Und es gibt einfach diese 25%. Die Punkte werden addiert und dann wird die Zeit auf dem zweiten Lauf der Punktebeiteil entscheiden. Soweit ein paar Informationen von Jetzt wollen wir versuchen, Ihnen den Barco etwas zu erklären. Von der Tribüne aus gesehen, damit Sie, wenn ich links und rechts sage, gar nicht verwirrt werden. Wir schauen ganz auf die Gegenseite. Kommissar. Und das wäre dann der Eckelsprung zu Beginn. Also unser Abgeordneter 1,45, 1,50, 1,50. Den können wir jetzt da sehen. Genau, wunderbar. Dann geht es auf sieben Galoppsprünge Richtung Ausgang zum SRF-Sprung. Well, hello and welcome here to St. Gallen, where we get ready this afternoon for the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. You can see our start list on screen now. Some of the very biggest names in the world of show jumping coming forward. Uh, Alexandra Fricar, we've got Harriet Nuttall of Great Britain. Barbara Schneider is going to be in the mix here this afternoon as well. Uh, Daniel Meach representing New Zealand. Billy Toomey, who's got an incredible horse coming forward. He'll be here for Ireland. Holly Smith, Katie Dynan of the United States of America. Dougie Douglas has been going well on the Florida circuit, now joining us over here in Switzerland. As we get towards the end, we've got Martin Fuchs in there, Paul Esterman, Hans-Dieter Dreher, Penelope Le Prevo, Abdel Syed, Oliver Robert as well for France, and then we've got Alan Jufer, Dennis Lynch, Luciana Denez, Francois Matti. Now you can see the real style and selection of riders that have come forward to compete and contend here this afternoon in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. It's a two-round competition here this afternoon. We'll keep you up to date with uh, all the rules and how the competition works as things progress. But we can see lots of crowds coming out to enjoy the sport here this afternoon down in St. Gallen. Been here for the last few hours as we get ready for this Grand Prix and it's been absolutely non-stop in the ring. So much entertainment, so much for the whole family to see and that's the warm-up where our athletes will be making their final preparations, getting ready to come forward to start here in round number one. 50 combinations in total coming forward, 25% of those will come back for round number two. So it's going to work out to 13 today that will return for round two. And the way it works here in this one this afternoon, it is faults from round one and round two added together, and then it's the time in round two that will be the deciding factor. But faults carry forward, and they will start in the second round in reverse order of merit. So in the first round, you want to be clear, but if we end up having lots of clears here this afternoon, then the time will decide which uh, riders make it through into that second round. Sounds complicated, don't worry, we'll keep you up to date. It is 13 obstacles out there, 16 jumping efforts, and it has been measured at 465 meters. That means the time allowed will be 70 seconds. Jared Lachat, a course designer who's built all over the world. Let's have a look at what he has in store. Big Oxer gets them underway, then a bending line, Simon Strides back down to the end gate. 
over the upright at fence two. It's just whirled upright, fence three on track, then a dog leg on seven or eight strides, thanks to this big gymnastic combination. Oxer, two strides, upright, one stride, Oxerite, and then a very delicate upright meets them down there with planks at fence number five. Bit of a rollback as we come round towards the Oxer at six. Big power line as well down to that water jump and then as you land you want to sit up because you've got another delicate upright this time landing and numbered as fence number eight rolling back over the upright at nine then you've got the liverpool at fence number ten and then round towards uh, the final curve line it's the oxer fence eleven double of uprights at a strong one meter sixty and then we finish over the longine oxer at fence number thirteen there you go it's as easy as that here in the Longines Grand Prix 455 meters the length of the track 69 seconds is the time allowed and of course 50 combinations coming forward to start in round number one it's the warm-up just at the top of the hill and as I said earlier, you know, it really is fun for all the family here in St. Gallen. They put so much effort into ensuring there's lots of displays, lots for all the family, and lots of places to eat and drink as well, which, as we all know, is very important at these events. And it's not just the Longines Grand Prix to entertain here over the weekend. It's also home of the FEI Jumping Nations Cup Switzerland, which we will see here on Sunday. So plenty to enjoy with us here on FEI TV as things progress throughout the day. Well, we look up towards the NL gate and we're going to see our first combination making their way down the hill, coming forward to join us and to get us underway here in the Longines Grand Prix. If you're a follower of show jumping, you'll know our athletes have had a chance to go out and inspect the course. They get to walk the lines, walk the distances, have a little look at the obstacles and questions that face them. But as you come down that hill, you're sort of just getting the course back in your mind, making sure it's nice and fresh. First on track then, and we are going to start in Sweden. Karen Martinson steps forward. Bit of a young rider this one as our pathfinder, 23 years of age. And it really has been an amazing few months for her. Selected, of course, to join the Global Young Riders Academy in 2017. And as a part of that, chose to receive coaching from Emil Hendricks. And that has brought her on so much. Stenhaga Tulip Tattoos, the horse that Karine Martinson will ride for Sweden. This is a nine-year-old by Karasini L. Got some no limit lines in there as well. So you're just having a look at that water line. Big open water there. A member of the ground jury standing on the other line to ensure that they don't land in the water or on the plaster scene strip at the back. We've had a look at a 3D animation of the course, but let's take a look in a little bit more detail as uh, Karin Martinsen of Sweden comes on course. So it comes down towards that start line. That's the Nations Cup Switzerland Oxer. Blank sitting underneath this one. You can see that bending line that just brings them down there on the seven strides. From there, quite a gappy upright that, isn't it? It's the Just World Upright Fence 3. Then a real gymnastic line as we come down here. The Long Jean Oxer coming in. Two strides, making up the distance nicely to the upright. Then one stride out over the Oxer. And we mentioned that on the course animation. It's such a delicate fence, that one, because it's a tiny, tiny plank sitting on top of completely flat cups. All you've got to do is breathe on it and it will come down. That's the Oxer at fence six. Big power line though. She comes down towards the water, still just sitting on four. And the orange uprights at fence number eight. Nice smooth roll back inside here. The St. Gallen upright. Ah, touch there, so it comes down. Sitting on eight faults as we come down towards the Liverpool. Fence number 10 falls as well, so she sits on 12 as we come down towards this final line. So that's the Oxer fence number 11 falling. Then we come down towards this double. Now they're both sitting at 1 meter 60, rode really well and recovered after that Oxer. And then to finish, making her way around towards this Longine Oxer at fence number 13. So 76.86 is the time. We'll have to keep an eye on that time allowed. Currently set at 70 seconds now. She finishes on 76.86, total of 22 there for Karen Martinson, who gets us underway representing Sweden. Great shot of the water jump there. You can see just how athletic that is and how much the horse just has to stretch to make that big four-meter distance. 
So she will finish on 22 total. That's Nina Zuger that joins us now. First for the home nation of Switzerland, Louis 162. Very experienced horse, 18 years old. It's by Lord Pizzi. Nina, who's 26 years of age. Like so many of the athletes you'll see today, she started at a young age, started riding on her parents' farm here in Switzerland. They've actually still got that farm at the moment. Great selection of horses there. They also breed pigs and have a recycling company. It's all based at home. And is involved with the whole shooting match. So just pulling down that line, she uses her upper body to try and balance them and get them back on the box, but just fighting her a little bit. combination so starting like that what would be now that it just starts to settle down starts to relax starts to listen a little bit more tackles the water down to the upright well representing her country for so many years. She's been to six Europeans as a junior and a young rider. And actually, she's building up quite an incredible string at the moment. She's got this one, a horse called Casanova, Berlin Blue, a couple of others. Ah! And that's very much a, a sort of related line all the way down there. You know, if you have an issue, the ox are coming in, it can affect when you come down towards that double. We heard the ground jury ringing the bell there. That's just to signal her to stop. And the arena party will rebuild. She'll get another bell, and then she can choose if she wants to continue. Assessed four faults for the refusal. Six seconds added on to the time as well. Let's see what she decides to do, because she may just take a courtesy fence and decide to call it a day. Naturally, she's going to stick her hand up and say, yeah, you know what, this horse has been jumping really well recently. Just having a bit of an off day. We all have them. We'll just pop it back in the stable, pull it out another day and hope that things go a little bit better. So Nina Zuger electing to retire there with Louis 162. Nicholas Ritchie steps forward now for Switzerland, Cardano CH. Getting straight underway, straight on track here. Not so good start. You can see compared to Nina's horse just how much more relaxed this one is, how much more settled it is. It really listening as well as uh, it does have the first part of the combination down. Quite a gymnastic line that one, and I think that fence five that we saw there, I think that's one that we'll see come down on a couple of occasions as things progress here in the Longchamp Grand Prix. We've got to remember under this format, 25% come back. That's 13 today, and it may just be that a fast four falter can make it through. So I think if you're going to have a rail in this format, have it early on, keep that in the back of your mind that you might just want to ride a bit more forward than perhaps you would. Take that odd extra risk. Especially at this early stage in the competition when so much is unknown. And really, he's given this one such a good ride all the way around. Just having that first part of the combination down. Finishes on four jumping, one time fault, so 70.13 is the time. Total of five there for Nicholas Ritchie and Cardano. I see him coming down here. Just takes that check and just doesn't quite make that back rail. It's a slight rub and it falls. Best we've seen so far, though, sitting on a total of five. Mati Bulo. Kiel Filou comes next. Represents France with a 12 year old horse by Kidam Shruban. 
Now, of course, as I know, Gerard Lachat will be with our grand jury, just watching these first few riders and deciding whether any adjustment does need to be made to the time allowed. I think it's important to remember in this competition that they are meant to be travelling at 400 metres a minute. So that's a big forward gallop stride all the way around. At this level, if you take a check or ride a wide turn, then really it should cost you a time fall. Got to keep that nice forward momentum. You can see the way that Gerard's built this course. You can afford to keep riding forward. There's no point on course where you have to make a really sharp or tight turn. So you can afford just to keep your horse moving forward with that line really nicely. So just steadying up a little bit around the turn. So 70 seconds is what we have to keep an eye on. That's what we have to get home. So about 50 seconds as he landed over that upright coming down the line. Through the distance. It's going to be on time faults as well. 71.09 for jumping one time, a total of five there. Five in total for Matty Ibalu. Seems just coming along through there, and there's just not any space to, to correct it. Is he just how disappointed he is there? Such an athletic course, though. One to keep an eye on, without a doubt. But today finishes on five. So, still looking for our first clear now. On to one of the crowd favourites here. Ryan Belsiger comes forward next. Cluzo de Lissou for Switzerland. Had some real good input over the year from his dad, who rode at the top level of the sport, along with Andy Kessler, who's trained him a little bit, and Thomas Fuchs as well. He was named Rookie of the Year here in Switzerland last year. That was one of the fences we talked about, wasn't it? You could actually see there just how delicate that little tiny white plank is sitting on top. And those cups are really flat, completely flat. So you've got that big gymnastic line coming down there in the triple combination, and then you've got to use that space. You've got those five strides just to really balance and make sure the horse is listening. It doesn't take much, though. He's at a slightly more forward pace. I think he's going to be okay for time. Just catches it behind, though. And Sits on eight as we come down towards the final line. So 67.25, couple down, finishes on eight jumping faults. But I would say the pace that he was going at is the pace that you need to ride this Grand Prix at if you want to get home within the time allowed. And you know, it's amazing that as soon as you start to move that little bit more forward, the whole course changes. The tests come at you that little bit quicker. You don't have as much room to rebalance and correct. Just finishes on eight today. To lift 50 combinations coming forward here in round number one. 13 will progress to that second round. Philippe Amaral comes now for Brazil. Premier Carthos VZ. Spoke to Philippe a couple of weeks ago and he was saying his sights are really set on Tokyo. He is so focused, he wants to get there. This is a horse that he's been pushing up the levels and it's becoming more and more consistent. It's a horse he took to the World Cup finals in Paris earlier this year. Just missed out on the medal at the Pan Am Games with this one as well. Oh, that was lucky. Under international rules, the horse has to finish 
before that is safe because it's balancing on the edge there. Now, interestingly, one of the arena party has went and pushed that flank back to the centre of the cup. So if I was judging, I'd have to be having a word with them because if that had toppled off, then it would be faultable. But I don't think Philippe Amaral will be complaining. Watch the time, though. Watch the time. Ah, he's over. 70.72. Just a touch over. So finishes on the one fault at this stage. Best we've seen so far. Let's have a look at this plank again. Let's so watch these back feet as he comes up and just touches it with one foot and that's enough just to push it onto the very edge of the cup that wasn't quite enough to bring it down. So he sits on one. Is that good enough though to get through to round two? 13 heading through today into that second round. Faults carry forward. Faults over round one and round two added together with the time of the second round. That's the format that features here in the Longines Grand Prix. Julio Arias comes now. Derica de Brum represents Spain. This is a horse she's had the ride of, of just under a year now. Starting pr to produce some good results. They'll finish fifth in the Grand Prix of Von Heiden around this time last month. combination down to the plank. So all opened up. Oh, and he's off. You could see him really just opening up the stride down to the open water there. Straight back up on his feet though. He's absolutely fine. Just takes a breath. Let's take another look here. The horse just stumbled a little bit and said, oh, there's water there. The horse absolutely fine. He looked fine when he got up as well, other than that grass stain. What a shame. After the way he went in Von Heigen, I really did think he would be one to watch out for here this afternoon, but just not his day. So the best we've seen then sitting on one time penalty, that is Felipe Amaral of Brazil, so sitting up at the top for now. Bronzelav Shubaya now, Zafria, Slovakia, based in Switzerland these days though. He's a man who's represented his country at the World Equestrian Games. He's used his horse for Nations Cups in the past. Ah. It's going to be a frustrating fence for him because we saw this horse in Samarin during their Nations Cup event earlier this year and he had such an unlucky fence there. I was really hoping he could go clear today. Another one that's just had a slight rub on that delicate plank. Up and stretching and lands way over, but you can see, you know, when you have to open up the stride to the water, you then have to sit back quickly because one of the real questions on that whole line is that orange vertical at fence number eight. Touch long. Lucky there. It's 
see him just sitting back, using his hands, using his reins to get the horse back because he knows that both those verticals sit at 1 meter 60. Touch at the last, will finish on eight jumping one time. Total of nine faults today, 17.81. Is that second fence with planks sitting underneath? And there he just got absolutely too close. Just didn't get the stride that he was hoping for. While shaping up to be an exciting one here this afternoon, eight combinations gone so far. Best we've had sits on one. Yannick Joran now. It's the Petal 2. Uh, this is one that I'm going to be interested in today because this horse has been jumping 1 meter 40, 1 meter 45 level, so it's really stepping up today into a fairly technical 1 meter 60 Grand Prix. As it catches it behind. Kenneth Duran knows the horse well, though he's been riding this one for a couple of years. This German rider Marcus Ventz who brought it out initially. And boy. Is this horse bred to drum? It's got Coleman, it's got Cafargo Z, Lord Danis lines as well. It's working to keep him straight. Six there down to the double. A few of them have been coming down on five. He'll finish on eight jumping in a time fault to boot, so nine. Nine is the total, 70.36. Second one in a row to come home on nine. Happy birthday! Well, he finishes on nine as he celebrates his birthday today here at St. Gallen. Clear would have been nice on your birthday, wouldn't it? Uh, right, let's go to Great Britain now, shall we? Harriet Nuttall joins us, a touch imperious. I'm trying to think, is there anything she's not done with this horse? It has to be her top horse at the moment. She absolutely loves it. It's just been so versatile. Second at Hickstead Derby last year. It's been to gold medal winning Nation Cups. It's been to various Grand Prix around the world. Speed Championship at Dublin. And actually, the last time we saw it jump internationally was at the Hamburg Derby just about two or three weeks ago. And now it's straight in here to the Longines Grand Prix in St. Gallen. Such imperious. 14 years old, that was lucky. She doesn't have to worry too much with this horse about water. It's jumped a lot of wires over the years. It jumps economically. This horse 14 years old now, Irish sports horse. Harry gets a lot of her horses from Ireland actually. seconds not going to quite be quick enough 71 47 jumps a lovely round but a touch slow and finishes on one see that just rocks back and forward back and forward but then stays in the cups so one time fault is all that Nariot will finish with today. We know it's 13 combinations that are guaranteed to come back. Is that good enough? We'll have to wait and see. Alexandra Fricar now. Volney for France, the nine-year-old, South France. High-winning mood. Alexandra's father was a professional rider. Her parents at an equestrian centre. So she's sort of bred to be here today. 
this horse just nine years old, so at the lower age range that you'd expect to see them at this level. Alexandra's been jumping it for a couple of years now, though, and a little closer, but has been quite consistent recently. Ah, it wasn't my fault. Like a couple of the horses we'll see today, it's, it is a newcomer at this level. There's no better way to educate them than to get them in the ring. Let them come and see, you know, all the crowds, the atmosphere, the flowers. With the nine-year-old horse, if you can come home with just a single rail down, I don't think you can be too disappointed. Yeah, nice round to be fair. 67 87. Remember, as we were talking about earlier, as soon as you start to just go that bit more forward down these distances and down these lines to make the time allowed, the whole test, the whole question changes. That's why the time allowed is such an important factor in modern show jumping these days. So she finishes on four, goes into third place at the moment with 13 returning. Ten combinations gone so far. Barbara Schneider now on track to Cerro F for Switzerland. Another relatively young horse at this level. This one nine as well. And Oldenburg by check-in. The horse that won the small tour at St. Moritz not too long ago. The 140 winning Cronenberg a little bit earlier in the year. This is a horse that she's been jumping internationally since it was seven years old. So it's been on the circuit with this rider for a couple of years now. Let's go and check in. She's given us a really nice ride round, isn't she? Come on, just sit up, hold it together. Time looks like it's been okay. You can hear the crowd saying, come on, come on, come on. Oh! The last fence got inside the time as well. 69.58. Was she thinking about that time allowed as she rode down towards that final long? She knocks her. Just stood off and caught it with the front legs. Ah, that's got to hurt her. How frustrating. 69.58, four faults, goes fourth at this stage. Some really nice combinations to come towards the end here this afternoon, so they're going to have to wait and see whether that's good enough to make it through. I suspect it won't be here today. Arthur da Silva now in non-stop Switzerland. Now based in Belgium these days, got a really nice facility that he owns there. in Brazil, moved to Switzerland in 2002. Oh, early rail there. This one's a 10-year-old by non-stop. Comes down as well. So sits on eight faults at this stage. And when you have that one early rail, and you can think, well, maybe I can gallop on and become the fastest four faulter and perhaps be in with a chance but once you've had eight rails in a competition with 50 starters I think it's unlikely he's going to be making it back so then you have to decide you know does the horse need the education does it need the mileage am I using this as a warm-up perhaps if he's in the Nations Cup on Sunday with this one the double just drifting right a little bit and we'll finish on eight just over the time though so let's make it nine 
70.839 the total there. Arthur de Silva for Switzerland. That's a horse he thinks a lot of. Jumped well in the World Cup at La Coruña towards the end of last year. It's a horse he took to the Nations Cup at Spruce Meadows. He jumped the Grand Prix at Spruce Meadows with that horse last year as well. Thirteen partnerships have jumped. Francisco Jose de Mesquita Musa next to go. Sharapova, 16-year-old by Balabu Jurawei. He's had a bit of a different start to his season because he based himself with Paolo Santana during the Winter Equestrian Festival in Florida. You know, that gives you a great opportunity with your horses because it literally lasts months. It's on for about three months or just over. And you can ride them at four and five star level pretty much week in, week out. And to have Paolo Santana's eyes on the ground can't do you any harm. Oh, when you can see that coming through that distance, he tried so hard all the way through the combination. It looks like it might have just touched the plaster scene. I'm sure the member of the grand jury that's out there will be having a look. Okay, so we're still just sitting on the four. See, I'm coming to fight a little bit here. Come back, come back, and then go. Finishes on four, 69.60, makes the time allowed. He goes fifth at this stage. Two sitting on a single time fault, Philippe Amaral and Harriet Nuttall, so one for Brazil, one for Great Britain, making up the top two at this stage. And Alexandra Francar of France sitting in third, fastest of the four falters on 67.87. Lots of discussions going on there. We go to Great Britain now, though. Great Britain and a rider who's now based in Valkensvard, Sam Hutton and Happy Dam. The 11-year-old by Kidam de Raval. Been riding this one for a couple of years now. She must come with some confidence. Top three finish with this one in Samarin. Jumped the Longines Grand Prix there as well. Just had a couple down, so I'm sure he's been doing some work since then. And what a great start he's off to today. See him really sitting back so quickly after that water. And that real test is the orange vertical meets them on the other side. Ah. Challenging line as he comes down towards the Liverpool there. He has to make the option to go on seven or eight. Started off incredibly well, and I'm sure he was thinking about that time of line as he came round the corner. Eight jumping and a time fault, so finishes on nine, 71, 03. It's going to be out of contention, I think. It's 12th at the moment, and so many to come. He's going to be disappointed with that. I think that is such a talented horse, so I would keep an eye on that one. Daniel Meek joins us now with Fine, represents New Zealand. Moved to Germany in the mid 90s, though, so based over in Europe. I'll shock them all. It's a 10 year old by Perlinski G. Daniel 
they were two-time Olympian. And this is the horse he took to the Nations Cup in Abu Dhabi earlier this year, in fact. Just back from Rome, jumped nicely there with it as well. as well. Remember, we've got to keep an eye on that time, 70 seconds is what they have to come home in. I think he might be in trouble. Ten seconds. You can see him checking and adding strides. Ah, oh, that's come down as well now. Started off incredibly well, four jumping one time, total of five though, 72.84, five is the total, so it goes into eighth place at this stage. If you have just joined us, it is the Longines Grand Prix here in St. Gallen. I'm Adam Cromarty, and we have 50 combinations in total coming forward. We've seen a total of 16 so far, and the best two that we've got both sit on a time fall. Philippe Amaral of Brazil, Harriet Nuttall of Great Britain. So that's how things look at this stage. Some disappointment there as he heads out back up to the warm-up. Lots of conversations to be had as he walks up that hill. He's making his way in then. Man who's ridden a lot of nice horses over the year. You might remember this athlete with Tinka Serenade that jumps individually at London 2012, took him to the Europeans, World Cup finals, World Equestrian Games, and he's in such a great position at the moment because he's got a few nice Grand Prix horses and some really promising youngsters coming up the ranks as well. As we wait for Billy Toomey to join us, though, let's take a quick look at that leaderboard. You can see Philippe Amaral at the top, Harriet Nuttall second. And the rest of the top five, Alexandra Francar of France, Barbara Schneiper of Switzerland, and then Francisco Jose Di Mosquita Musa of Brazil sitting in fifth. Here's Billy Toomey then, Kimba Flamenco, such a nice nine-year-old, starting to become really consistent at the upper levels. The nice metre 50 level win earlier this year, in fact, went well in Vice Baden about 10 days ago, had a real unlucky fence in the Grand Prix there. Let's see what Billy Toomey of Ireland can do here in the Longines Grand Prix. Rattle. Nice open six strides to the water. Nice conservative turn. And if he can keep this pace up, I think. He might be okay. He's steady down a little bit around the corner. It's quite a technical line, you know, you need to make sure the horse is a little... Oh! Billy, Billy, Billy. First part of that double comes down. And he does make the time allowed. 69.73. Goes sixth at the moment on four faults. Came so close, though, to being our first clear. He just caught it behind. Next is final number Shame there for Billy Toomey. Kimba Flamenco finishes on four. So Billy's the steadiest of the four falters. You see the crowds there really starting to build here in St. Gallen. There's been an awesome atmosphere all day long. Yves van der Salt comes now, represents Belgium. Jeunesse, the nine-year-old. 
on some feet. You see, his dad was an inventor, his brothers all jump as well, so it really is a family sport. Does a good job of juggling real life work as well. He works for his family's logistic company as well as riding at the top level. And he knows this horse well. It's nine years old now. He brought it out for the FEI Young Horse competitions at the age of six. are not causing too many issues. And I have to say that orange vertical on paper you think might come down a couple of times so far hasn't really caused any problems. Could this be the first clear? Is he going to make the time allowed? I don't think he is and the first part of the double comes down. It's like Heartbreak Hotel, that line, isn't it? Uh, four jumping, one time, total of five there today. 71.60. Best we've seen then, still sitting on a time fault. You see the reaction there as they're filming on. So at the moment, the cutoff is nine faults, 70.81. That's the cutoff, nine faults at the moment. Jane Richard Phillips joins us now, Victorio. Now, I was just about to say that this horse has been jumping incredibly well, but this is the biggest course that this horse will ever have jumped. It's at the stage now that she's really starting to push up the levels, up to the top, and up to these big Grand Prix. It is a horse that likes this ring though, because we saw it here last year, jumping the kind of meter 45, up to maybe a, a meter 50. That extra 10 centimeters and the technicality, Jane herself, I mean, her career just keeps going from strength to strength, doesn't it? The regular Nations Cups, the Grand Prix, Global Champions Tour as well. And you know, this horse, considering its inexperience to this level, has answered some of the most technical questions on course really, really well. Nicely down over the final oxer as well. Eight jumping, one time fault, total of nine today. 71 46 for Jane Richard Phillips and Victorio. I see Jane just giving a little pat there. And quite rightly so, you know, as a nine-year-old come into the ring, first big Grand Prix, it's not bad, is it? Two with a time fault sitting at the top. Philippe Amaral, the fastest of those, sitting in pole position as we head through to round two. Harry Nuttall sitting in second for Great Britain. And it is Great Britain we head to once again. William Whitaker and Fandango, 15-year-old by Last Liberty. a horse that William's wife Elizabeth jumped in the young horse classes on a few occasions. Top 10 in the World Cup at Olympia with this horse. He rode it on the Nations Cup team at Spruce Meadows a couple of years ago. Centre part of the combination though and that very delicate plank coming down for William today. So he sits on eight at this stage. So unlike this horse. So 
the horse that was bred by Carl Eric Larsson in Sweden. She's really just having a bad day at the office today. I think he's going to pull up. Yeah, he does. So uncharacteristic for that horse. Real shame there. So William Whitaker likes to retire. Hey, Atlantic over the water. Better to look 20 today. William Whitaker for Great Britain with Fandango. He likes to retire. Slowly edging towards the halfway stage now here in the Longines Grand Prix. 20 from the 50 have gone so far. And Great Britain once again. This time it's Holly Smith and Hearts Destiny. The horse that she took to the Grand Prix of Samarin earlier this year. Just had one down there. You can see, interestingly, she came off the left handed turn into fence number one. I think most have been coming off the, the right rein. Sheila made that conscious decision when she walked the course. It's another one that stepped up quite recently. But you know, she's produced some great horses over the years. Including Dougie Douglas, in fact, who we're going to see next with Katie Dynan. Whoa! You could see that coming from two strides out, couldn't you? Just didn't have the stride she was planning for. The line that we've talked about on a couple of occasions already this afternoon, you know, they jump the water, really opens them up. There's not that much distance down there to get them back. And other than that, what a lovely round and home inside the time allowed as well. 69.50. See, Holly just thought she saw a long one and the horse popped the extra one in. Recovers well though, comes home, finishes on four at this stage. Second fastest of the four falters, so goes into fourth place at the moment. You could hear her kind of saying time allowed there, and I think that's so true. And I said earlier that the time allowed makes such a difference. Here's Katie Dine and now Dougie Douglas for the United States of America. The old ride of Holly Smith, also involved here today in the Longines Grand Prix. She is going to be disappointed with that. It's a horse we've seen on the North American circuit jump well this year. Palm Beach Masters at Deer Ridge. Fifth in the World Cup at Washington International last October. It's been on form. Ah, you can see her just getting really deep off the corner. I think she might be deciding to call it a day. Yeah, gives that signal. I think that's important. In this format, you know it's the top. 13 that will be returning today and once you're out of contention if your horse doesn't need the mileage and it is just having a bad day and sometimes there's not much point just kicking on just for the sake of getting around the course you know that horse has done so much katie's done so much with it katie dine in there at the usa with dougie douglas spent a bit of time in europe now Trained with Beat Manley, who spends nine months in the US, but then the rest of the year over on the European circuit. Yasmin Chen now with Ninyon. Yasmin, who trains with Yannicka Springer. And actually, Yannicka rode this horse during the early part of the year. She's given it back to Jasmine now.
Yeah, really nice down that line. Jasmine jumped clear with this and Oblivik earlier in the year. Whoa! That water causing issues today for Jasmine. That was a shame because it started so nicely. And that's the member of the ground jury, in fact, just making sure that she is okay, but she's straight back up on her feet. Let's take a, another look down here. You can see her just, she can feel the horse backing off and I'm not sure how many waters the horse has jumped, but it looked like he said, what on earth is that? And Jasmine, a relatively young rider, and you know, building that experience at this top level, and how often do you get to jump a big open water these days? You, know, you see them at Aachen and at Spruce Meadows, Hickstead's got one here, but other than that, you don't really get a chance to see too many of them. But she's back up, horse has been caught at the in gate, and all looking okay. Yeah, I've just tuned in. This is the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. I'm Adam Cromercy. We're joined today by 50 horse rider combinations coming forward to try and make it into round number two. It's 13 that will be coming back. It could be 13 clears, it could be 13 on faults. The faults carry forward though. And they do come back in reverse order of merit. We'll keep you up to date, though, with how the rules and how the competition works as things progress. There's a long way to go here in the first round. Some great combinations still to come forward. Cassio Rivietti standing by, about to get underway, having a little look at the water with Ulat Boy. Ten-year-old stallion, this one. Cassio Rivietti, a two-time Olympian who represents Brazil. The road for the Ukraine, you might remember, quite a while back now, but back to riding for his home nation. He's really passionate about producing young horses. He's really passionate about producing that higher level of horse and rider combination in his home nation of Brazil. feel that coming through the combination, couldn't he? You could see him just working and trying to make up that distance. <laughs> Nicely down to the water on six, fighting to get back on the hocks though, as he comes round towards the orange upright. Fastest to the four falters at this stage is 67.87. And because it's 13 that come back, if you have a rail, you want to be the fastest or second fastest of the fours if you can. Opens it up, stands it off down to the last. 67.43. And as we discussed, that was exactly his plan. He's now the fastest of the four falters. and he will head into third place at this stage behind those two athletes who sit on a single time fall. So at the moment then, the cutoff is now eight faults, 67, 25 and eight. Brian Belsiger of Switzerland hanging in the balance and we know he's not gonna be there for long. Here's Louis Sewell next, golden wave. O.L. Ten-year-old, Lion Ortago. This is a new horse on Louise's string this year. Already had a couple of good wins though at meter 45 level together. And at this level, the horse has probably jumped about two or three other competitions at a meter 60. He's always cool under pressure though, had a great grinding with her mum, her dad and her brother, all having been involved with the sport. And her partner as well, Graham Lovegrove, he'll be here somewhere 
watching on. We've talked about that line on a couple of occasions, and you know that comes from the water. They open them up to the water, then you've really got to use the distance to get them back, and just a touch long as he came down to the upright there. Over the time allowed as well for jumping one time to live five 72 45 and it's five today for great britain's louise saywell and golden wave <laughs> Cutoff has changed once again. Cutoff now sits at five faults. So 13th place at the moment. Daniel Meekin Fine sitting on five. Little pat there from Louise Sewell as she heads out. Hans Dieter Dreher next to go by Linda. This is a 10 year old by Berlin. Representing Germany, of course. And he's been part of that German team and represented his country on so many occasions over the years. drawn order in these competitions is quite important because if you're coming from this stage onwards then you've had that opportunity to watch a few go so you'll know the time allowed is a very important fact in the competition and you'll know where the more difficult and more challenging lines are it's a little knock there got away with that been on fire this horse from well and Lanikin and Vice Madden as well. Come on, hands. Oh. How many have made it all the way around to this final curve line? Finishes on four today. 68 1 2, so goes into fifth place at the moment. Third fastest of our four fault rounds. Philippe Amaral sitting at the top on 70.72. One time fault, Harry Nuttall on one time fault for Great Britain, sitting in second, Cassio Rivietti in third as the fastest of the fours, 67 4 3. And how lucky was that as that rolled around in the cups there? See, they jumped every single fence with him. Four faults today, Hans Dieter Dreher, Berlinda for Germany. Staying with Germany now, this is David Will and Deluxe Ilton that comes next. By Cooper van der Heffink. Now this is a horse Vincent Lambrecht brought out as a six-year-old. Ten-year-old now. David's only ridden this horse at a handful of shows, but already had a good five-star win at metre 50 level in Hamburg about three weeks ago. Plank. Plank is just so delicate. And he knocked it right out of the way. Still getting to know each other, this partnership, though. It's looking like a Fast four fault might get in, but as I say that, the back bar comes down off the oxer and he now sits on eight faults as he makes his way around towards this long sheen. Final question on course. So it's eight faults today, 68-64. David Will of Germany, Deluxe Hilton. 
as he almost got underneath the fence and then had to come up and just there was no way the horse could get up there. So David Well finishes on eight. People just enjoying the sunshine. Quite warm out here today, in fact. Really nice weather. I've had a few thunderstorms over the last few days, but glad to see it brightening up as the weekend progresses. Hospitality full on both sides of the ring. When I came in today, there was even people on the fence line outside the show wanting to watch the sport here this afternoon. And that sport progresses now as we head back to the home nation, back to Switzerland, be it Manly. The rider who we see compete at the top level all over the world and Desari, 10-year-old KWPN by Veron. He trains Katie Dynan that we saw jump earlier. Viet, who spends about nine months of the year now over in the United States and then comes back to Europe. Such an experienced athlete though. As a rider and a trainer as well, you'll remember he trained the Swiss Olympic team for the 2008 Games when they earned that bronze medal. He's been at eight World Cup finals, three World Equestrian Games, two Olympics. And this, an amazing horse. He was the winner of the World Cup final, the Washington International Horse Show. It's a great event if you've never been. It's right in the heart of DC and they actually close off a street in the middle of Washington, DC, to put the stables up. Oh, that stayed. He's still clear at this stage. The atmosphere here is electric and one of the home nation could jump clear. I think we'll hear a little bit of cheering. Started off the year with confidence with this one at the World Equestrian Festival, the Ham Beach Masters as well at Deer Ridge. But great support from his family with his wife Mandy, son Thomas. Could this be? Could it be the first clear? Gonna have to keep an eye on the time. Is it? No. Well, all the fences are still in the cups today. He didn't stop on course, but he was a touch too steady. It is 71-01 against that time allowed. The horse says, I don't believe I've had a time fall, but sadly, yes, you have. It is one time fall. Now, that one goes second at the moment. We've got three on a time fall now. Felipe Amaral, Brazil. He's the fastest of them on 70.72. Be it Manly of Switzerland, second fastest on 71.01. And then Harriet Nuttall of Great Britain on 71.47. That's the scores on the doors at this stage. 13 combinations progress through to the second round. Back in reverse order of merit. Faults carry forward. Martin Fuchs and Chaplin now. Another of the home nation. Represents Switzerland. He's a local rider based in Zurich. He's been to two Olympic Games. Trains with his father, Thomas Fuchs. And he's had a real busy few months. Just back from the World Cup finals in Paris with Chaplin. Uh, with Clooney, sorry, another of his horses. It was Clooney that he took there. That was the horse that picked him up two bronze medals at the Europeans. Now, this horse likes these big rings. It jumped double clear in the Nations Cup at Samarin a few months ago. It's got a nice big open stride. It's absolutely fine for time. It's interesting that one, that it just kind of encourages them to turn in a little bit sharp. 
finishes on four, 67-46, heads into fifth place. He's the second fastest of the four falters. Will that be good enough to make our top 13 and progress? It's got a bit of a nervous wait, I'm not sure with that one. I think the one-time faults are him with a chance. I'm not too sure about the four falters though. Still plenty left to come forward, remember. It's 21 combinations still to feature in round number one. He's got a great support team with his father, Thomas. Here's Paul Esterman now. Curtis Sight comes forward. The former Swiss Rider of the Year. Got some nice lines in this horse, including Shilano Z. Oh, a little rattle. That's just sitting on the very edge of the cups again. Just hope it stays there. Ah. You can see as they come round that rollback turn, it just encourages the horse to drift over towards the left hand side. going to be one of the faster four falters either. Picks up a time fault in fact, 70.25, four jumping, one time fault, total of five here in round number one. Just rolled it out there, almost with a cannon bone, wasn't it? Fetlock just pushed it out the cup. Their leg would have made it, they'd have got over it. <laughs> Shame for Paul Esterman there, finishing on five. Penelope Le Prevot joins us now with Vancouver. Represents France. She's the Olympic gold medalist, part of the team at Rio 2016. She's had some amazing horses over the years, hasn't she? This is a relatively new one, though. She's had it on her string since about February this year. It's an old ride of Romain Duguay. He had this one for a while. There comes that plank again. I think if you had to pick one fence in particular that's caused the most problems on this course, it has been that plank. And if it was sitting on its own, it may not cause quite as many issues as the fact it comes out of a big power line, you know, oxer, upright, oxer, related distance, straight down to that plank. And that's why it's there. Kind of looks one of the very best in the world and we're only having this horse since February this year. She's done a cracking job, hasn't she? Nicely down over that final oxer. 70.36. Not quite good enough to make it back into the top 13 today. We'll finish on a total of five. Lucky there, wasn't it? Just rolled about. Didn't quite hit it hard enough to come down. Having another quick recap at the cutoff, then. 13th place at the moment is Paul Esterman on five faults. 
There's the top five. Three on a single time fault. Philippe Amaral, be it Manley, Harriet Nuttall, and Cassio Rivietti sitting as the fastest of the four falters. Now, if they have an early rail, that time that they have to get back in, 67.43, that's the fastest four fault time. Pierre Switzer comes now, living the dream. Hopefully it's his dream we're going to be living today. Uh, this is a 13-year-old by Tulin. Here's the former world number one, known as the Swiss machine. Now you might have seen this horse before. It's an old one of Alberto Zorzi. Dora Di Miranda had this in the past as well. Here Switcher has been riding it for a couple of months and is really starting to push it up the levels and you know starting to ask those questions now. Not his day. See him using his upper body coming down that distance. Just get the horse back and listening. So come back, come back. Taps coming down there, but stays up and finishes on four today. 67.99 goes into seventh place at this stage. About 17 or 18 combinations still to come forward in the first round. At the moment, he would come back. Long way to go, though, isn't there? Bit of a tough wait now for him. He doesn't know whether he can pop that horse away or whether she'd hang around for a bit. We'll wait and see. That's Yuri Mansura who comes next with Opium du Soufflé. Represents Brazil. Now to ride at this level, you really need a top string of horses. One or two isn't enough. Just have that up right there. And he's in that position now. He's got Babylon and Inferno, which we saw him ride at the Royal Windsor Horse Show a couple of weeks ago. And this is a new ride that he's pushing up the levels now, Opium. It's a nine-year-old. on eight at the moment. Now twelve. But with these new horses and you're just getting the mileage, it's so important just to keep going, get that experience for them in the ring. Uh, 16, 9, 73, 12 is the total there. Harry Mansour representing Brazil. jump high enough. So much analysis goes on with these athletes as they come out the ring. 
I think that's important while it's still fresh in your mind. So, you know, is there anything that we can do differently next time? Is there anything we can change with our warm-up? Or was it, in fact, just an unlucky day? Because I think in the world of show jumping, you need a bit of luck sometimes, don't you? Seventeen combinations still to come. We've jumped 33 so far. 50 is the total that will start in round number one of the Longines Grand Prix. Abdel Saeed comes now with Jumpy van der Hermitage. Nine-year-old by Tulin. It's actually been jumping really well recently. Just having that odd rail here and there. Some good placings. Placed well at Miami during the Global Champions Tour down on the beach. He represents Egypt, but had his own base in Belgium for a couple of years now. I think it was 2016 that he uh, decided to have his own base in Belgium. He's just been based in Europe for quite a lot of his life. He moved over here when he was 11. he's had for about a year now. I've seen Sam Hutton ride this in the past. And this is off to a good start. Just constantly thinking about those time allowed, aren't you? back turns just caught a few of them out I think you almost want to just arrive there a stride or two earlier don't you and then you've got that time to sort things out two down eight jumping one time it's nine in total today 70.13 for Abdel Said of Egypt not good enough then to make our cut off cut off now sitting at five yeah, it's the fastest of the few that are actually sitting on five so our three on one time fault are through all the four falters are through at the moment and then one rider on five and as we get down towards the final 12 we can start to confirm those placings of who is definitely coming back Manuel Fernandez Saru now with Kidam representing Spain. This one by Verdi, it's an 11 year old. It's caught a couple, that one. He's another one actually that's based in Belgium, where he represents Spain. He's got a base called MFS Horses. He left Spain in 2002, moved over to Germany for a while and settled in Belgium. There's a horse that Trevor Coyle of Ireland brought out for the first time a few years ago. Manuel's had it for about a year now. It's interesting that line from eight to nine because if you went round the back of fence one, round the back of the officer, like you would expect to do at the lower levels, you would be guaranteed time faults. Another reason why the time allowed plays such an important fact, because if you could go wide and take all the room you want, then it would make everything so easy, wouldn't it? Uh, eight jumping one time, total of nine today, 71. 42 is the time, Manuel Fernandez Saro representing Spain.
Yeah, he's happy with that horse, just a touch disappointed, perhaps. Always fascinating to see the reactions as they come out, isn't it? It's great to see people of all ages enjoying top sport here in St. Gallen. Here's Olivier Robert of France with a horse called Eros, 14 years old. Featured at the World Cup final in Omaha last year in Nebraska. That was a great uh, tournament, that one. The horse that certainly builds up air miles. He went very well at the Spruce Meadows Masters in Calgary. Double clear in Laval just a couple of weeks ago. Double clear in the Nations Cup at Dublin last year. And Eros is definitely that sort, isn't he? He's the big, scopy Grand Prix Nations Cup type of a horse. A great rider to watch. <laughs> that time allows really encouraging them to cut that corner again. If you could hang out to the boards, put four or five strides in before there, be an easy question coming out of the corner. 67 7 6 finishes on the fourth, third fastest of the four falters at the moment. Came down behind, he just tried to kind of turn through the air, didn't he? So many have come close, haven't they? So many we've seen come round that corner on a clear, and then something happens down that line, or they're just a touch too slow. Willem Vermeer next to go, represents Belgium with IQ. Well, he's 38 years old. His parents introduced him to the sport. He's had a busy schedule. We saw him at the Royal Windsor Horse Show, went straight on to Weissbaden. A couple of days off, and here he is again, back in the ring. And that's why he's becoming so good with his incredible string of horses. this horse to the Nations Cup at Samarin. Part of the team that picked up a bronze medal there back in April. Jumped the World Cup with this horse at Olympia. And a five star at St. Moritz towards the end of last year. And actually he was in the Nations Cup team that represented his country here at St. Gallen last year. Just missed out on a medal as well actually, if you remember watching last year. Time allowed in the back of her mind. Thank you. Oh, it's that same line again. And he is going to be over the time allowed as well. So finishes on four jumping one time. Total of five. 70.99 there for Willem Vermeer representing Belgium. Touches it behind. So no change to the cutoff at this stage. No clears as yet either. We have seen three that have come home in a single time fault. 13 combinations left to come forward. So at this stage of the competition, we'll be able to start confirming who's guaranteed a place. Here's Francois Matti that joins us now. Casanova represents Belgium. A man who's produced tons of nice young horses and must have the longest legs in the sport. First part comes down.
He's been jumping the source for a few years now. He knows it really well. And yeah, he's decided I'm out of contention. The horse doesn't need the ring experience. Just having a bad day. You can see him shake his head, and I think that's you know what he's thinking. The horse is just came down there, and once that happens, it's just you're out of contention. Horse doesn't need the mileage. Yeah, I think I'll save it for another day. I brought that horse out as a six-year-old. He's produced it all the way up from the young horse class. He's up to this level. One as a seven-year-old in Bon Hyden. He's got great lines, including Clinton and the Bab de Rev. Just a bad day. Francois is a great guy, though. Always friendly, always makes time to stop and chat. The amount of horses that he's you know, brought out as a young horse and then produced up and sold and started all over again. He's got a great business. Luciana Diniz making her way down now into the ring. Fit for fun represents Portugal. 14 year old horse. This is one that she knows inside out and upside down. It's by for pleasure. This is the horse she took to the Rio Olympic Games. She's also taken it to the World Cup finals. She's taken it to two Europeans. And I don't know if you were watching the Spruce Meadows Masters Tournament last September, but that is always one of the toughest courses in the world, and quite rightly so. It's for three million dollars, million dollars to the winner. She finished second. This horse is incredible. And look, it goes in a simple loose ring snaffle. Amazing horse, this one. Jenna Diniz, based in Germany these days. And as an interesting, useless fact, she actually enjoys writing as a hobby. And if you've followed her career, then she has written a book called Fit for Gold. And it's all about her experience of competing at Rio 2016. Definitely worth the read. Already had some good results. Finished top 10 in the World Cup qualifier in Gothenburg earlier this year. Of course, she's been riding for about six years now. And other than taking the odd little check, you know, this horse just goes round in its own little unique way. Blue string snaffle in its mouth. Just pops round nicely. So far, this round deserves to be clear, doesn't it? Oops, sit back. Wait. Wait. And just bring it home. But can she make the time though? Do can she? Yes, she can. 69.71. I think that fist pump says it all. She is. Our first clear here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. What an amazing horse that is. What an amazing partnership they have together. They really have done so much. And she loves that horse such a lot. Well, it's interesting now because that's our first clear. We've got 11 left and that means Luciana Diniz is guaranteed a place to come back in round number two. Also, Philippe Amaral of Brazil is guaranteed a place to come back in round number two. And you can see just how happy Luciana Diniz is there. And it looks like it's just off for a nice little hack up the road now, doesn't it? Cracking horse. Cool as a cucumber. Here's Dennis Lynch now, all-star five. It's a 15-year-old. Horse has had a top 10 finish at the World Equestrian Games with Dennis in the past. This is another old pairing, isn't it? They've been together a long time. In four World Cup finals together, a couple of Europeans. Just back from a win at Valkensvaard. So we know the top two guaranteed to come back. Four faults is the cutoff in 69.60 at this stage. With Dennis plus 10 more still to come.
Uh, you could hear him all the way down that line saying, whoa, 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 come back, come back, come back. And then he thought, am I in with a chance of being a fast four? I'll give it a bit of welly to the last. He finishes on eight today, 67, 76. Great guy, great athlete. There's our one clear on screen as well, Luciana Dinez. Just chilling out, chillaxing and getting ready for round two because she knows she's guaranteed a place. Someone else that's guaranteed a place now is Beat Manley. Beat Manley and Desire for Switzerland through alongside Philippe Amaral, Luciana Dinez. Getting down towards the business end of things now. Down towards that final ten. Here's Romain Duguay, represents Switzerland with Calder, the nine-year-old by Casal. He's from France, but has lived here for about ten years and since 2013 decided to represent Switzerland. Well, no one else has had that first fence down so far, but it has now fallen. Romain Duguay and Calder. Now, the fastest four falter is definitely in with a shot of getting through. 67.43 is the time of the fastest four falter, and I think he's actually lost a shoe now. The go in here is good, and another bit comes down, and I think it had all the ingredients there to decide to retire, didn't it? Another rail comes down, you lose a shoe coming through there, and although this ground is exceptional here, I think those studs are mighty important. You can see he's got a couple of dome studs in the back there. You see, it just sort of wiggled loose, didn't it? And then as he landed, it'll have just took it the rest of the way. And flicks it off. I've been out of contention and the experience that they've got as well. Just no point continuing, really. Good news for Harriet Nuttallow of Great Britain because she's guaranteed to come back now. 71-47 and one time fault was her score. So she joins Beat Manley, Philippe Amaral and Luciana Denez. That's the four that are definitely guaranteed to come back. We know we're taking 13, top 13 in reverse order of merit. Alan Juffer on track. Ramanshoff Tic Tac. This is a horse that's jumped Nations Cups. Jump World Cups and quite recently just fourth place in the ball a few weeks ago. Very athletic through the gymnastic combination. That gallop straight down to the water. See how quickly this horse comes back. He just comes back with his upper body, slight check down the rein, and the horse is back into that nice balanced rhythm. But he's done a lot of Nations Cups with this horse. He's been to a lot of venues where you see an open water. There ain't that many of them around. Oh, it's that line again, isn't it? When you're thinking about the time and you're coming off the corner, that has been a fence that's fallen a few occasions. 66.85 goes into fifth place. That's the bad news. The good news is it is actually good enough to come back. So he's guaranteed a place as he heads into fifth at the moment. So he will come back for round two. Remember, when they come back, they will be carrying the faults forward. So it's faults from round one and round two added together. And then it's the time from round two that will decide the result. So Alan Schufer heads out, knowing that he will come back for round two. Nicolas Del Monte now. Ten-year-old, LX VP. Combination at a top 10 finish in the Paris Masters at the end of last year. Already some good placings so far this season. Starts off well. We brought this horse out as a seven-year-old. He's produced it through the young horse classes. 
no jumping here as a 10 year old. Well, we know we've got one clear. Cuts off at the moment, 69.58. Four faults. That's the 13th place rider. 13 guaranteed to come back. And that information is now important for Nicolas because he has to just keep that forward momentum. He has to keep moving forward if he wants to be in with a shot. And, you know, I don't think he's going to be quite quick enough today. Takes one out down to the Oxer. Finishes on four, 68, 88. Now we know 13 come back. He slides neatly into 12th place at this stage. I think you'd keep your fingers crossed, but not hopeful that we'll see him back. Real shame there for Nicholas representing France today. You can see that disappointment in his face as he comes out. Getting down there to the final few then. Seven combinations still to come. Werner Muff joins us now. Daimler, 10 year old. He set up his own base here in Switzerland back in 2004. He's still based there. has been riding this horse about three years now. It's one that he took to the Nations Cup at Samarin earlier in the year. Samarin's another lovely venue. I went to Samarin to do my FEI judges exam and you sort of drive through a bit of a housing estate, go down this country lane and all of a sudden you're met with this world-class sporting venue that They've got such big plans for with huge big swimming pools and hotels, tons of bars, there's restaurants there. And the equestrian facilities are absolutely first class. It's a good round so far, isn't it? But that's that line. We've talked about that line so much, haven't we? wheels just came off down that distance. Well, completes the round out of contention today. Finishes on 8, 68, 55, and it's eight jumping faults for Switzerland's Werner Muff. Down there. You just want to be saving that time off the corner. And I think that's the real test as you come into that, Oxer. It's a sort of stifle there, it just caught that rail. And there's that score confirmed, eight faults for him, 68.55. Now if you follow show jumping, you'll know just how nice it is to watch this man. He really is a great tactician. It is Marcus Enning now. Retta 2 for Germany. It's amazing to think when he was growing up, actually, he wasn't that great. And he once got an award for finishing the course after falling off three times. And I think that's such an inspiration because if you're... You know, out every single week, jumping at the lower levels, not getting on that great, always falling off. And, you know, some of the top guys like Marcus, they all started there. And now, I mean, for me, he is, you know, one of maybe three or four riders that I really enjoy sitting watching, even in the warm-up or on the off day when they're just schooling their horses. Because he makes it look so effortless. If you just watch his legs and watch his hands, he just keeps that nice, steady contact on the horse's mouth all the time. You know, he's not pulling, he's not yanking its head off, he's not kicking it on the way around. 
he gives such slight aids and the horse just listens to him all the time. Oh, that was a shame down there, wasn't it? So he's now thinking about that time and I don't know, I don't think he's going to be quite quick enough. He's got a big open stride though, let's have a look as he finishes on four here today. 68.53 goes into 12th at the moment, 13 come back. He'll have to bite his nails for a while because we've still got some good ones to come. Covers well down to that orange up right after the water. Uh, looks like he just arrives there maybe a little bit early than he wanted to. One of the best in the business, the Mark is sending for Germany. Jana Federica Meyer Zimmerman now with Goja 27, another of the athletes that will represent Germany here today, and another that has that first fence time. We've seen it on a couple of occasions now. <laughs> To be in with a good shot, you want to be getting home in about 66, 67 seconds with a one rail finish. You can see her using this horse, he's big stride, trying to save time. She's turning in there as tight as she possibly can. Without a doubt, when she had that fence down, she thought, right, it's game on, I've got to get home and I've got to get home quick. So about 66, 67 is what she's got to hope for. And leave these up, get up, and now go. Can she make it through? She's got to keep moving forwards. Pushes through the finish line, 64, 50, guaranteed a place to come back. And that is just how experienced she is. She changed her plan as soon as that first fence came down. You can see her open up the horse's can to stride and she comes home fastest to the fours and guaranteed to return. Goes into fifth place at the moment. Jana Federica Meyer Zimmerman will feature Goja 27. Alan Schufer guaranteed a place. Casio Rivietti for Brazil guaranteed a place. Martin Fuchs, Olivier Robert as well. And the cutoff now sitting on four faults at 68.53. People always say having the first is so frustrating, and I suppose it is, but if you're going to have a fence in this format, then make it the first, because you can do exactly what she did. Four left to go. On to another man who you could describe as the best in the world, Steve Godat, Hannah. Represents Switzerland. Not even got enough time to tell you what this man's done in his career. You know, some of the highlights, you know, London Games, individual Olympic gold there, team bronze at the Beijing Games, two World Cup wins, ranked in the top 10 in the world. This is a horse he's already used for Nations Cup duty. It's a horse he had. Samarin back in April, featured in the Rolex Grand Prix at Spruce Meadows with it last September. And it's a horse he's only had for about a year. Wait, wait, wait. Nicely done. Chips an extra stride in there, but still comes down and clear so far. Oh. Down that final line. You could hear the crowd were right behind him. Definitely one of the crowd favourites here. That is the line that their athletes out there must absolutely hate. It's caused so many issues today. If it's not the officer, it's the double. 
he's clear around to the final line and then he pushes himself out of contention finishing on a total of 14 12 jumping a couple of time faults 76 79 just didn't have the stride there and to be fair to steve you know he tried everything he possibly could down that line and i think she said oh dear because it's just not like that horse well, we're down to the final three. Things are getting really interesting. The cutoff now for fault 68.53. It's Marcus Enning that sits in that dangerous 13th position. Germany now. Christian Kuka, Limoncello, NT. Now, this is going to be an interesting comparison because we saw Jana Frederica Meyer Zimmerman do exactly that same thing. She opened her horse up and actually came home as the fastest of the four falters. Let's see if Christian's got similar tactics in his mind. I don't think he's quite as forward. Worked really hard, it was arms and elbows down to the water and takes a stride out down there as well. Of course, just how fast you can push them really depends on the horse and the experience, doesn't it? To get through, you want to be about mid-60s. Not sure he's going to quite make that today. Nice open strike to the last, but finishes out of contention. 69-98. It's just a different horse from Winning Moods and uh, Goja 27 that you know you can really open up and and let you know gallop round in a big open stride. And if he just kept that first fence up, that would have been a sterling round, wouldn't it? Two combinations left to come forward. We've got Hans Dieter Dreher and Marcus Senning just hanging on in there in 12th and 13th place. Hans in 12th, Marcus in 13th, two left, Gregory Waffley on track now, MJT Nevados S. Ten year old horse by Calvados Z. This is a horse that I saw him jump in the New York Masters just a few weeks ago. Went well there, in fact, then went straight on to Hamburg. Push and over. see anything until they've jumped this line because this is the line isn't it this is the one come on one fence left bags of time to get home and we have ourselves another clear here in the Longines Grand Prix 66 53 Gregory Waffle MJT Nevados for Belgium jumps clear in round number one so he will be coming back and the time's important as well because we've got two clears now and that time will uh, decide the order for round two, faults and times. So that means Gregory Waffley will be coming back in pole position as our last to go at this stage. So that's all the good news. The bad news is Marcus Enning, you're out. One combination left. Hans Dieter Dreher sitting in 13th now. Will he make it through? Pierce Switch is guaranteed a place. Alexandra Francar as well. Oliver Robert, Martin Fuchs, they're all through. But will it be Hans Dieter Dreher that makes it to round two? Or will it be Christoph van der Sal? Last with identity. And I don't want to jinx him. Probably will, but this horse 
has been ultra consistent recently. Never fails, does it? And it should have saved that till the end. It never fails. He's at a really interesting stage at the moment with his horses. He's in a bit of a building stage. He's got lots of nice younger ones coming up. And this one, though, is really starting to bring home some money at the higher levels. Now, to get through, 67.99 is the time he has to do. It's gone, he's out of contention. Mm. 69.17, it will be eight today. Eight for our last to go. Christophe van der Sel representing Belgium. That was that third fence, the Just World fence. And maybe just got a bit close as he went up through the air. And you can see the back feet just catching that, and it sort of rolled about for a millisecond and then hit the floor. So that was Christoph van der Sel, last to go with identity, and of course out of contention and coming back. 50 combinations in total start in round number one of the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland, and it is 13 that we do bring back. You can see those cues as our qualified riders. Gregory Wathele, the fastest of the clear, so he'll come back. Uh, Luciana Diniz, Philippe Amaral, be at Manley's in the mix. Great set round from Harriet Nuttall, who'll come back. Jana Frederica Meyer, she was the fastest of the fours, we'll remember that round forever. Alan Jufa returns, Cassio Rivietti, Martin Fuchs, Olivier Robert, Alexandra Francar, Pierre Switzer, and Hans Dieter Dreher. So that's the riders that will come back. We'll remind you of the rules when we head to that second round in just a couple of minutes' time but they do come back in reverse order of merit. So the fastest clear will be coming back as our last to go. Gregory Waffley will know exactly what needs to be done when he joins us. And then of course we work our way up to the fastest of the fours and then the slowest of the fours to get us underway. Faults will be carried forward though. You can see the ring crew just coming in now to do a little bit of work and we'll pick up the action again in just a couple of minutes' time. This is going to be so exciting. They'll be carry the faults forwards, but it is only the time from round two that will be the deciding factor. Anything could happen. Do not go anywhere, because we'll be right back with the finale here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland as we get ready for round number two.
Welcome back to the action then as we get set and ready for round number two here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. We know it's 13 combinations that will come back in reverse order of merit. And we know it is going to be an exciting round number two because pretty much in this format, anything could happen. If those coming forward on fault stay clear and then those that come forward on a clear have faults, then the whole result could be reversed quite easily. It's a great format and we're ready for a great round two here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Everyone getting settled, getting comfy and getting ready to be on the edge of their seats here. There's a few crowd favourites, there's a few of the very best in the world coming back here as well. 13 partnerships out of the 50 will return for round number two. It's the audience of all ages coming here to enjoy their afternoon at St. Gallen. Some talking to each other, some not talking to each other, and some completely oblivious that they're on camera. Here then is that uh, order that they will come back carrying those uh, four faults hands Dieter Dreher, Berlinda 68-1-2 so they get us underway then we've got Pierce Switcher, Alexandra Francar, Olivier Robert, Martin Fuchs, Cassio Rivietti, Alan Jufer, Yana Federica, Myers Zimmerman, Harriet Nussel, be it Manley, Philippe Amaral, then we go to those clears, Luciana Diniz, fit for fun, Gregory Waffley. Here's your track! We start over 14, it's fence two backwards. On to 15, it's fence one backwards. Now as soon as we land from there, round to fence number 16, that's the St. Gallen. It's gonna be yellow, green and black, that one when we see it in real life. 4BC now, second two parts of the combination, it's upright, one stride, Oxer. Then we come round towards fence number 17, it's horses heads, the upright. Two efforts left, roll back, tight as you dare round towards the very rustic looking fence number 18 and then this is going to be the heartbreak line here because as you land you want to gallop as fast as you possibly can and push down that final distance as you find number 13 same finish line as we saw in rounds number one the music's exciting and the sport's going to be even more exciting as it gets underway in just a couple of seconds time final reminder of the rules then i'll stop harping on about them they come back in reverse order of merit those with faults will be getting us underway then those who sit on a clear will come back last to go Faults are carried forward, so if they start on four, they will end on at least four, and it will be the time only from round two that will decide that result. Hopefully that all makes sense. You ready for this? It's going to be exciting. We get ourselves underway. It is round number two here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Technically not a jump off, it is a round two. But really, between you and me, it's kind of like a jump off. They want to go fast and they want to leave them up. Time faults, though, stay the same as round one, so it would still be accrued at one for every four. And of course, we know about the whole fault coming forward thing, but that's really the only difference. In essence, be quick, leave them all up, and you'll end up in a good position. The fastest one with the lowest number of faults will be crowned our champion here in the Long Jean Grand Prix of Switzerland. Now, our athletes, when they walked the course earlier on, they will have had a look at the jump off course, or the round two course. Got me seeing it now. But they'll just have a quick reminder as they come through, as they stand at the gate, and then as they come into the ring, they just want to refresh themselves, make sure they know where they're going, make sure they know where those little turns are that they want to be taking to save up some time. And we are going to start with Hans Dieter Drea, represents Germany. Berlinda is the name of the horse, carrying forward four faults from round number one. So we had a look at the course in the animation, but let's take a look in real life, shall we? Now this first line has been reversed, so what was 1-2 going one way now becomes 14-15 jumping the other way and away from home. Just to confuse things. 
So that's fence number 14 to get them underway here in this round two course. Down to that big powerful oxer at 15. And you can see them just ducking inside there. Coming on a roll back turn round towards the upright at 16. Second two parts, what was a triple combination in the first round? Through B, one stride out over the oxer at 4C. This is fence 17 with those horses staring right at you. And then back round, nice and tight, nice and tidy there. Into 18, now gallop as fast as you possibly dare. And I think we might see them go a bit faster than that even, down towards the final fence. That's 13, 40.19, and it is just the four faults that he accrued in round one that will stay on his scorecard. So finishes on an overall score of four, 40.19 for Hans-Dieter Dreyer. See just how much scope, and that is a big, powerful oxer. Looks really square now as well, so the front and back rails are you know, absolutely parallel, which is good for careful horses. As we know, 13 making it through. So even if you're bad at maths, you'll know we've got 12 left to come. Here's Switzer joining us now, living the dream. Represents Switzerland. Again, carries forward four from round number one. He's only been riding this horse for a couple of months. He's been pushing it up through the levels. To be in with any chance, he's got to leave them all up here. Nice tidy turns so far. And just look how tight they're turning in here. You know, you turn a couple of strides and you're up over that. And this is where you just want to allow them just to push on down there. And finishes on four. 40.63, just a touch steadier. Not too much in it. About four tenths of a second just over. But again, you know, he's only had that one for a few months. Still getting to know it. Still maybe teaching it the Pierce Switcher jump off turns. So finishes on four here in round number two of the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Such a multinational round number two, this. Uh, Alexandra Francar joins us now, represents France. Another one that carries forward four from round number one. She tried to push on down that line. Hard to see from that angle, though, wasn't it? And jumps the last. So we add the four from round one to the four from round two. Makes a total of eight in 42-1-6. Yeah, just catches it behind there. Doesn't take much, and you can see those are in quite shallow cups today. Now, as we move on down this list, I think we might start to see things shuffling up a little bit. Here's Olivier Robert that joins us now with Eros. Standing by, making his final adjustments again. Just having a quick look. That 
see what his plan is. You can see him actually setting off at a much more open and quicker pace than the others. It's a great big Nations Cup horse, this. A nice simple tack. Jump double clear in the Nations Cup at Dublin with this last year. You can see him using his voice and his upper body just to say whoa, especially coming down to these verticals that are a bit more delicate than those big powerful oxers. And now here, this big long stride really comes into its own. Takes one out down to that oxer as well. 37.52, the best we've seen so far with just that rail from round one counting towards the final score of Olivier Robert and Eros representing France. It was a cracking round, wasn't it? That was the first one that we'd really seen just open up and a big open stride. Eros, a great horse for him. Might have a bigger head, but boy, it is so talented, so athletic. That's the sort of horse you'd want to stick in the lorry and take home, isn't it? Here's Martin Fuchs now with Chaplin. Another one for the home nation. Represents Switzerland here. As he has done at Olympic level in the past. He is on four faults from round number one. So now to get to the top, he doesn't want to knock anything down and he wants to be faster than 37.52. is one format with lead changes time and time again. Now where Olivier's horse was that big open stride, Martin's horse can just turn that fraction shorter. See that there as he just powers up to there and now he wants to open it up 37.52 is that time yes the lead changes once again 36.26 just the four jumping faults there for Martin Fuchs that was the smile as well we just saw it Martin's a great guy though Always got time to stop and chat. So passionate, like all these athletes about the sport. And you could see what a great angle and just how tight you could turn over there. Super round there from Martin. <laughs> when you've got a connection in the ring, it's, it's so hard not to try and jump every fence with them. Here's Cassio Rivietti now, Ula Hot Boy, Martin Fuchs leads, Olivier Robert second, Hans Dieter Dreher sitting in third at this stage. Here's Cassio, down to business for Brazil. Sits on four from round number one as we know. time to beat now 36 26 economical turn oh rattles it though and down it jolly well comes he will finish today on eight jumping faults 37 07 time was good enough to slip into second at this stage but that additional rail pushes him down into fifth place you see you just saw that stride from three away the back feet just don't come with them so heads down into fifth. Getting rather exciting, isn't it? Some good ones to come as well. Are two clears still to feature? Three on a single time fault. First up, we've got Alan Juffer to come, who sits on four. Ramensoff Tic Tac, representing Switzerland. Him, Jana, Frederica Meyer, both sitting on four and carrying those faults forward. 
36, 26 and four faults sits at the top of the leaderboard. Martin Fuchs for Switzerland leading the way here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Big stride. This is a little bit like Olivia Roberts' horse, isn't it? Same big, long, open stride. Which normally outdoors would be a huge advantage, and in these final lines, it's a huge advantage. They can make these indoor style turns a little bit more difficult. Finishes on eight today. Four from round one, four from round two. Eight is the total. 40.21 is the time. Try to just jump across that one and cut it with the knees. Six combinations still left to come forward. This is the final rider who carries four faults through. We then go to those one time faults, and then, of course, when it gets to the climax, we go to our clears. Uh, this is Jana Frederica Meyer Zimmerman, represents Germany. Sits on four. 36 26. Time to beat. Four faults remaining at the top. This horse can hang in the air. It just makes those landing turns a touch more difficult. And also it can make the distances a little bit difficult as well. So you're fighting just to keep that rhythm just slightly wider here. Takes one out down to the Oxers. Most of them have done. 38.20 is the time and will stay on just the four there. Jana Federica Meyer Zimmerman for Germany. Goja 27. Great replay shot that, isn't it? Jana Frederica Meyer there, heading into third place on four. Martin Fuchs sitting up at the top. Olivier Robert sits second at this stage. Long way to go, though. Harriet Nuttall joins us next. She represents Great Britain. A touch imperious, and she brings forward just a single time fault. This horse jumped its heart out in round one. Just a touch steady. Picked up a time fault. If she can stay clear here and come home with a good time, she's going to be in for a good place. Here we are, then. off and running. Leave them up, she can do no worse than fifth today. Nice big open stride. You can see Harriet being so careful there just not to overcook it using the room. Opens up slightly down here. Gets the clear though, and that means she heads straight to the top, 42-98. And you could see that was her tactic all the way around. She wasn't galloping crazily, but she wanted to leave them all up because she knew that would guarantee her a very good finish here in the Longines Grand Prix. She's done so much for that horse over the years, you know, from Nations Cup to Hickstead Derby, Hamburg Derby. 
was there just a few weeks ago, in fact. She'll be very happy with that, and you can see that smile there. So Harriet Nuttall for Great Britain now leads the way. Martin Fuchs second, Olivier Robert sitting in third place. And don't forget, in theory, we are saving the best to last. Another one who joins us sitting on a single time fault as we welcome them back to round two, be it Manly, Desari for Switzerland. Economical angle, just slices over the top. Nice even seven strides into this rollback. And now go, go, go. 36. Yes, we've got a new leader, 41-42. Straight up towards the top. Fishes Harriet Nuttall of Great Britain to second. Martin Fix of Switzerland in third place. And I think he had the similar tactic to Harriet. He didn't want to go crazy. He didn't want to gallop. But you know, when you look at the time of Martin Fuchs at 36.26, it does prove that that time can be beaten, and three quick ones still to come. Philippe Amaral now, the fastest of those who came forward on one time fault. Then we have the two clears still to see as well. Philippe Amaral, Premier Carthos BZ. Biker Fargo. Horse is 15 years old, he knows this horse well. I think he might be picking the pace up as he crosses that start line. And he's not going crazily fast, is he? Very much depends on the horse you're riding. And you can see him take a check. I think he felt that coming. So he sits on five now at the moment. It's going to have such a huge effect on him. You know, if he came home with that time fault, it would have put him in third place even if he was the slowest of the rounds that we've seen but he's going to be pushed down into eighth place five faults overall 42-1-3 there for Felipe Amaral of Brazil now it starts to get very very interesting because we've got two left to come here in round two both of those join us penalty three. They've got a clean scorecard. And what would you do if you were riding? Well, Gregory Waffley, he's going to jump last. He's got the easy decision because he'll know what needs to be done. But for Luciana Denez, does she go for the steadier clear knowing there's just one to come and a clear would guarantee at least second place? Or do you try and take the win? Well, if I had fit for fun in my stable, I would always be here for the win, because this horse is incredible. It's fit for fun. Luciana Diniz, second last to go, represents Portugal, and she is clean. No faults at all as she joins us here. Nice clear scorecard to get herself underway here in round two. Let's see if we can work out her plan as she crosses through the timers.
She's going for a forward but sensible clear. It's a really good turning horse, this one. Turn. And she is opening it up down to this final line. Amazing round. 38.57. Another huge big smile there from Luciana Diniz. If only you could find 10 horses like that. Now, when you compare her time to someone like Martin Fuchs, it wasn't the fastest round we've seen, but she didn't have to be. It's such an interesting format, this, isn't it? Super little horse. Love it. One combination left to go. It's not over, though, is it? Not by a long shot. And Gregory Waffley coming back in pole position. He knows exactly what needs to be done. He needs to leave all the fences up and he needs to be faster than 38.57. It's as simple as that. Gregory Waffley for Belgium, MGT Nevada S. Comes back on that clean scorecard. And he won't have been hiding. He'll know exactly what he has to do. Will it be Luciana? Will it be Gregory? Let's find out. I think she's a, it's a touch faster down that line. Maybe slightly wider, actually, around to the double. 38.57. I think they're pretty much neck and neck as he gets this nice turn back. Oh, it's gone. It's all over here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. He takes the rail. The best he can do is fourth place now as he pushes over the final fence. But 38, 26, the time it's not good. And it heads down into seventh place. And just look at the emotion there from the incredible Luciana Diniz and Fit for Fun, who will be taking the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Let's take another look at this turn. Gregory Wathelazy tries to get that big tight turn. And that is all about risk and reward, isn't it? Because he could, he could have pushed on and been the fastest for falter and finished in fourth place. But he came in thinking, well, all I need to do is go a touch faster than Luciana. But Luciana Diniz, what a great win for her. Fit for fun. The horse that's taken her to Spruce Meadows, it's taken her to Nations Cups, it's taken her to Grand Prix all over the world. And it's now taken her to the top of the leaderboards here in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. The celebrations are going to be long-lasting here tonight in St. Gallen. And here is that result. Luciana Diniz crowns our winner of the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. Fit for fun. 38.57 is her time. Second place, it's be it Manly, Desari, and Harriet Nuttall of Great Britain will finish in third. A touch imperious. Amazing afternoon of top international sport here at St. Gallen. Don't forget as well, coming up this weekend, it is the FEI jumping. Nations Cup of Switzerland to enjoy here on Sunday afternoon. Well, it did keep us on the edge to our seats all the way to that penultimate fence there for Gregory Waffley. But Luciana Diniz, incredible rider, and I have to say, fit for fun. It's one of my favourite horses on the circuit at the moment. Such simple tack, such a simple little horse. You know, if you saw that in the barn, you wouldn't think it could come in and do exactly what it has today, but boy, is it talented. It's got bags of scope, bags of talent. And the crowd here today are just loving that combination. Just look how quiet and relaxed that little horse is. Yes, that was the best one. Luciana Diniz, a three-time Olympian, 
this is the horse she took to Rio for the Olympics there. World Cup Finals, two Europeans, second in the Grand Prix at Spruce Meadows last September and today winner of the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland. I've been Adam Cromercy. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage here in St. Gallen. Whatever you're up to, have a great evening. Come back and join us for the FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Switzerland this Sunday here in St. Gallen. Congratulations, Luciana Diniz, and from all the team here, have a great night. Ja, dann können wir hier Maria Zimmermann bitte sofort zur Siegerehrung, wenn Sie dann noch im Parkour sind oder irgendwo. Wir wären froh, wenn Sie dabei wären.
Belgien, Grand Prix of Switzerland. 2018, meine Damen und Herren, internationale Prüfung mit zwei Umgängen, die Sieger. Die Siegerehrung dieser internationalen Sprintprüfung der Werdegang die Zeitmessung wird vorgenommen durch Kieslow Schannerich, Brand Manager von Dorsch in Schweiz. Er wird begleitet von John Roach, Effect Jumping Director, unserer Hauptpräsidentin Lina Schlössel und unserem Vizepräsidenten Urs Schirner. Die Siegerehrung, die Siegerdecke für die Siegerin, gibt es drei Dorschindecken. Sechs Los und natürlich eine Uhr für die Siegerin und Blumenschleuse für die beste Amazone. Und das ist natürlich jetzt auch gleich ein Eingespart, vielleicht kriegt sie dann zwei. Und gestiftet für einen Spezialpreis für den Crew von Toshiba Tech Switzerland. Und die Sieger für das ist die Sanimin. Siegerin des Longin Grand Prix of Switzerland 2018 für Portugal. Fit for fun and Luciana Dinis. Meine Damen und Herren, darf ich Sie bitten, sich von Ihren Sitzen zu erheben, wo Ihr Volume B von dem National Deportive Governor ist, weil es bei der National Anthem of Portugal ist. Gratulation an Christiana Dinis. Für die Schweiz, 
Daje od Bea Fendy. Das, meine Damen und Herren, war die Siegerin und wenn wir auf den Bitten kommen, wir dann auch zur Übergabe des Schrecks für die Stiftung Just World. Gratulieren aber jetzt zuerst Luciana Diniz, Bernd Mende, Harry Bettort, Martin Fox, Oliver Robert und Janne Friederike Bayer-Zimmermann. Jetzt, bevor wir auf die Ehrenrunde gehen, würde ich sagen, machen wir gleich auch die Übergabe des Chefs für die Stiftung. Ich bitte jetzt zu uns in die Arena Florence, Amagon, Managing Director von Just Draw Europe. Und für die Züge und Just Draw Ambassador seit mehr als zehn Jahren. Die beiden sind hier und ich zeige uns mal das Bild, damit ich sehen kann, wie die ganze Sache sein So, jetzt kommen wir zum Ehrenrunden. Angeführt von Luciana Dini, begleitet von der
Das erfolgt jetzt der Fachverband für die morgengemäßen Prüfungen. Dann heute Abend sind alle Kolleginnen und Kollegen, die hier freiwillig mitarbeiten seit vielen Jahren zum Konzerts abgeladen. Ich darf mich für Ihnen bringen, halt verabschieden. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen wunderschönen Abend. Genießen Sie noch ein bisschen in unserem Kreise. Oder dann kommen Sie gut nach Hause. Und vielleicht würden wir Sie ganz gerne morgen wieder begrüßen dürfen. Und natürlich auch dann ab und zu. Dankeschön. Merci beaucoup. Allez,